the 1988-89 Benton High School Homecoming Royalty.
Windows move. 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 Windows move.
Robert Godino on the run up takes the ball and he kicks it down to about the 11 yard line. The Catholic return man, whose number I did not get, did you get it? That was Chris Kittle. Chris Kittle brings it out to the 25, where Catholic will put the ball in play first down, 10 to go from their own 25 yard line, and it is a fired up ball club that the Benton Panthers send out on the field, fist waving, high fives already. You talk about juices flowing, they're flowing out there tonight. It will be Jody Freeman, Brad Chambers, Chris Nolan, and Chris Kittle in the backfield for Catholic. And the guy to keep your eye on will be number five, Brendan Cook. Cook at 6'1", 160 pounds, is probably the premier wide receiver in high school football in the state this year. Cook flanks wide to the right. They right break the, the bone. Yeah. Coming out, straight ahead handoff to the fullback, and he plows ahead, does Chris Nolan for maybe a half yard. They may give him one full yard. Let's call it a yard pickup. Second down and nine to go. As in the, on the tackle was the entire center of that maroon clad Panther line. <laughs> <laughs> it was interesting, Ben, uh, Arkadelphia starting breaking the bone, or I'm sorry, Little Rock Catholic, I'll get it right in a minute. Breaking, the, breaking bone. the bone and using motion. Now they've got Standard bone with Cook split wide to the left. Second man through is Chris Kettle. He tries to break out over left tackle, gets ahead for maybe three yards, bring the ball out to close to the 29. Call it uh, third down and six to go. Pick up a three on the play. Third down, six yards to go. They might put it in the air this time. Catholic is going from left to right tonight in this first quarter as uh, the Panthers are, of course, defending that north goal post. Out they come again. Little confusion. Check the signals. Do Brendan Cook and Jody Freeman. Now Cook comes wide to the right this time. Fake pitch back. Cook rolling. Cook is deep. He's wide open. And what a nice great play. play. What a great play. Freeman hit him right on the hands. And coming over to make the stop was Rodney, uh, Rick Daniel, rather, went high with him. And just as the ball made contact with Cook's hands, Rodney Wright reached up, or Rick Daniel rather reached in and knocked it away and knocked Cook to the ground. Something we saw a little bit last week, uh, Bill, is the, the, the pick on the sophomore. Rick Daniel is a talented sophomore, but he is still a sophomore. And uh, Arkadelphia picked on him a lot uh, late in the ball game, but didn't have a lot of success. There. And right away, Catholic goes at him and he makes a good play. Jake. Goheen and Robert Godino deep. Slight fumble of the snap and a poor kick. Very, very poor kick off the side of his foot. And the, everybody runs away from the football as it rolls just across the 50. Let's call it the 48-yard line of Benton Panthers. First down, 10 to go. Benton with the football at their own 48, and that's a break, uh, Rob. It definitely is. Uh, Bo Blair is the punter, and he's a good kicker. It was uh, kind of interesting. There was no pressure put on him, but I think when he fumbled the ball, kind of let it dribble through his hands. He thought there was going to be a little pressure. Indeed, only a 23-yard punt. All right, Jamie Jones starts at quarterback for Benton. It's Jones. Here we go. Straight ahead, handoff, and that's to Sheldon. Sheldon pops it down across the 40. Inside the 40 to the 37-yard line. Kurt Sheldon on the first handoff of the ball game popped it briskly behind tackle and ripped it off for about, let's see, 18 yards, 17 yards? 15 yards. So it's first down, 10 to go. Ball placed down on the 37-yard line of Catholic. Once again, the Panthers come to the line of scrimmage in their wishbone offense. First man through, this time is Shelnut, and he goes nowhere. Easy handoff that time by Jamie Jones as he tried to just slide Shelnut through the line of scrimmage. There was no hole, and he was belted down after a pickup of a yard. So it's second down and nine. It's Jamie Jones, the quarterback. Kurt Shelnut and Robert Godino are the running back or the halfbacks with Randy Wright in tight at fullback. Once again, Jones barks it out. He's hit just as he tries to get rid of the ball. Goes loose, and Catholic is going to recover deep, and it may go all the way for a touchdown. Mark Walls picked it up. And they stop him at the five. Just as Jamie Jones was attempting to hand the football off, he was hit. The ball popped in the air and rolled briskly toward the Benton Panther goal line. Everybody was in pursuit, and the first man to get to it was Mark Walls, 5'8", 151-pound senior. 
He picked it up in mid-stride and took it all the way down to the five-yard line where it's first down, goal to go for Catholic. First break of the game and a tough break for the Panthers. Indeed so. Jamie Jones got uh, tried to pitch under pressure. The ball was hit. He was hit. And it went wild away from everybody. And uh, Udino had one shot at it, and it uh, ricocheted off of him as he was, got, as he was hit. And uh, the next man to get to it was Walls, who picked it up and ran it to the five. We've got eight minutes, 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. There is no score. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. We're back to the action here at the C.W. Lewis Stadium. And right now, the Panthers have their back to the wall. The Catholic High Rockets have the football at their own, at the Panther five. The quarterback sneak on the carry, Jody Freeman, and he's in for the touchdown. Freeman fake first to Brad Chambers, then to Chris Nolan, tucked it on his hip and took it in for the first score of the ball game. As Catholic got an opportunity, got a break, and utilized it to score. It's six to nothing now in favor of the Catholic High Rockets over the Benton Panthers with eight minutes and 50 seconds left to play in this first quarter of football. First time this year that Benton has trailed in a football game. They are, it was the first time they really had a disastrous uh, a break go against them, and we'll see how they uh, respond to that. There is a procedure penalty against the, uh, called against the uh, Benton Panthers as it appeared that uh, number 21 for Benton, who is that? That's Will Connell. Will Connell jumped offside, and that'll move the ball a half yard closer. sir. I don't know whether that's going to change the uh, Rockets' strategy. In the kick is Bo Blair. Bo is a junior, six foot, 172 pounder, and he is a soccer style or sidewinder kicker, but he doesn't take a deep movement away from the football. He's almost straight on, but still soccer style. Kick is up. This time it's good for the second time in a row. And it's 7-0. Catholic leading Benton with 8.50 to go in the first quarter. We'll be back after this timeout. We're just about ready for the kickoff as Catholic now we'll try to defend and keep the Panthers off the scoreboard. And Benton knows the pressure now. Here's the kick. It's going to Gadino deep at the two-yard line. He's out to the 5, 10, 15. He's got one. Oh, he came close to splitting the middle and breaking that one a long way. But coming in to make the tackle from, the, uh, from his, I guess, wide wedge spot on the, uh, on the defensive side was Tom Rawlings, a sophomore who came up to make the stop just at the 25-yard line, so it's a 24-yard line. First and 10 for Benton from their own 24. A real and change in field position, Bill. Jake Goheen is in at wide receiver, and Brad Collett is now in at quarterback for Benton. And boy, you talk about field position changes. That's a toughie. There is Godino, breaking one, breaking two. Robert Godino gonna break over all the way across midfield. Down to the 40, inside the 40 to the 30. What are they going to put it? 39-yard line, but Godino is hurt. Godino is in pain. He broke two tackles at the line of scrimmage, stepped by one guy, gave the little shuttle move that he likes to give on uh, the cornerback coming up, Mark Walls, and then about four of the Catholic High Rockets ran him down from behind, and Godino is down. Now, how bad he's hurt, I don't know. Can you tell from here? Walking to the sidelines, I think he'll be back. Yeah, yeah definitely so. It's interesting. It looks like uh, Benton's found a soft spot on that defensive front of Catholic, and it'll be interesting to see if they attack that again. That's the same spot that Shellnut broke that 15-yarder in the first drive. Godino breaks it all the way down inside the Catholic 40. First down, 10 to go from the 39-yard line of Little Rock Catholic. The Panthers faking a handoff that time was Collett. He powers his way down across the 35. Let's see where they give his pro progress to. They're going to mark him down at the 36-yard line. Make it a pickup on the, well, 36, yeah, 36-yard line. Make it a pickup on the play of three. 
Second down and seven. Actually, they gave him four yards on it. Second down, six to go. Greg Rogers in, in place of Godino. Godino's still, they're still working on him. He's down. He really must have got popped hard. I think he must have landed on the football. Collin up in under quarterback. Spins, hands off to Sheldon, who powers straight ahead off right tackle behind uh, his two big guys, Michael Teague and center Sam McCampbell and got maybe a yard at the most, so it's going to be third down and five. Third down, five to go for the Panthers, and they need to get some offense going to get over that blow of not only losing the pitch back, but then losing Godino in this first or second series of offensive plays for the Panthers. Collett looks over the defense. Now he comes in underneath the center. Turns, spins, fakes. Now he cuts it back up inside. He's hit once and knocked down short of the first down where they stopped him at the 33-yard line. It is now third down and three. Third down and three for the Panthers, and I believe they're going to go for it, uh, Rob. Six it, minutes, 40 to go. On that right side, they're having a little bit more trouble moving the ball. Uh, Pierpoli doing a good job over on that side, as well as uh, uh, Dean Roberts is making some plays over there. Jake Goheen is back in the ball game. He splits wide to the right. Straight wishbone offense for the Panthers. Collett looks it over, fakes once. Now he pitches wide. The ball Another hits the bad ground. Pick. Now it better be just picked up and held, but it's the Catholic Rockets, I believe, coming up with the football again as we have another fumble. And this time, coming, it was a pitch out to Kurt Sheldon. It was a little bit toward his chin. He got his hand up, could not control the ball, and coming over to make another cover on the ball it looked like Mark Walls I'm not sure down 10 to go from their own 48 and old lady Mo is swinging for the Rockets right now Catholic on offense here's the first pass of the game completed to Brendan Cook and Cook takes it down across the 35 to the 34 yard line before he stopped a little look in pass Jody Freeman spun out moved to his right looked in saw Cook and hit him with a perfect pass Cook cut it back toward the middle and was knocked down at the 34-yard line. So the pickup on the play of 13. Another first down for Catholic. First down, 10 to go as the Rockets really have it cooking right now. They're hitting on all eight cylinders at this point. Straight ahead handoff this time. And all alone breaking through is Chris Kettle. And Kettle gets another first down as he broke the line of scrimmage. There was no purple jerseys around him, maroon jerseys around him. They're, they're making the holes, and they, uh, they've got all the momentum right now. Benton needs to uh, make a stop here and make a big play. Split wide to the right this time. Is Brad straight ahead trying to That's run your through big Kelsey, Del Dedman, and Heath Nix, and there's no way you're going to run through those guys. Well, Connell came over to get a piece. Uh, pick up on the play of one yard, but that's about all. As Chris Nolan powered right into the middle of the line, it's second down now and a long eight. I'm sure they gave him only one yard pickup. Second down, nine yards to go. It's actually closer to a long eight, but we'll call it nine. It's Jody Freeman, the quarterback for Catholic. They break the bone again, put a man in motion. They have Cook split to the left. Straight fake a first handoff to the fullback. Now Freeman is running. He breaks the ball down inside the, the 10 to about the seven yard line, but we have a flag down and a penalty to be assessed against Catholic. And I don't, didn't see what the call was, but they will repeat it. So you can call that one back, mark off the penalty yards, and we'll find out how big it was. It might be a holding call because it was the flag was thrown as the play was in process, progress, and Kelsey Dedman was in hot pursuit, and that may have been what got him by. It was only a five-yard penalty, though, inadvertent holding. So it's now second down and 14 as the ball is pushed back to the 21-yard line. Second down, 14 to go for the 21. Coming in with a play is uh, Brad Chambers for the Rockets. Splitting wide left is Brandon Cook. They break the bone again, wing back to the left. No motion this time, pitch back to Chris Kettle. He's looking for running room, makes a good move, but coming up to knock him down before he can do too much damage was number 26 Rodney Wright of the Benton Panthers, but he still 
was able to pick up the yardage that was lost by the penalty and a couple of yards to boot. So it will now be third down, seven to go for Catholic with four minutes left to play here in the first quarter. And it looks like the Panthers are a little bit out of sync right at this moment, Ron. They really do. Uh, and uh, Catholics are taking advantage of it. This is a big play right here. If Benton can come up with one, they'll be in good shape. It is. Catholic on the attack. First a pass down to Cook. Freeman just stood up, looked down. Cook ran a post and gathered the ball in down near the three-yard line where it will become first down, goal to goal for Catholic High. And they mark it at the three, so it's first down, goal to goal from the three for Catholic. And they are really, really cooking. They're pumping on all eight right now. And look as if. That's what really makes them tough, Bill, is that they, they can work the ball so well uh, out of the uh, on the running game, and then they can just raise up and throw a quick pass and uh, have a man wide open. They just tried to run Chris Keitel off left guard, and he didn't get anywhere. Chris Kettle, rather, or Kittle. And he absolutely was stacked up right at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So it comes down to second down now and goal. But you're right, and this Cook is, you know, everybody in the world knows he's out there, but he gets open, doesn't he? Well, they're going to play a zone against him. That's Benton's forte in the defensive backfield. And and uh, they're, they're playing him kind of soft to get, uh, because he can be, he's such a dangerous threat and he's going to find some openings that will, if they're going to continue to play him that way. Hand off straight ahead to Kittle again and Kittle uh, this time off left guard following uh, Paul Susky and Mark Regent powers it across for another touchdown and just like that Catholic goes up 13 to nothing. And with two minutes and 46 seconds left to play here in this first quarter, things are not looking good for the Panthers, but don't count them out. This is a very, very good football team. Remember last week, Arkadelphia ran pretty wild in the first half themselves, although they could not put the ball in the end zone with this ease that Catholic has so far. Ball's down, kick is up, kick is good, and it's 14 to nothing. We played two minutes and four, well, we've got two minutes and 46 seconds left to play in the first quarter. It's Little Rock Catholic 14, Benton Panther 0. We'll be back with more Benton Panther football after this commercial timeout. the kickoff following the last Catholic touchdown. It was short and high. A fair catch was called for and taken at the, where are they going to place the ball? 32 yard line where it's first down, 10 to go. Ball's on the 32 of Benton and uh, they have not really had great field position since that first possession but this is not bad from the 33. Once again it's Jamie Jones back in at quarterback Straight ahead handoff. And uh, Roger Barker in there at uh, halfback now. Uh, Godino started to go out on the field, but uh, they had Barker in there. They want him to, he's still uh, having some uh, problems, but he thinks he can play. We may see him before too long, but right now Barker's in there. We had Greg Rogers back deep for the kickoff in, in Godino's place. Uh, Benton has had turnovers, and that's really uncharacteristic of them, and that's what's got them down at this point. They need to take care of the ball. Very much so. Jamie, jo no, that's Collett back in there at quarterback. Nope. I was, yeah, it is Collett. We have whistles and flags all over the place. And coming up without a, he a helmet is Dennis Bird. The play went on, and Dennis came up sans headgear, and that's not a safe thing to have happen to you out there in the middle of the line. They're marking it off against uh, the Panthers, five yards. Illegal procedure call against the Panthers. It'll now be first, second down, and 12 as uh, there was a pickup of three and then a loss of five, second and 12. Two minutes and five seconds left to play in the first half. Uh, Another indication, Bill, that uh, Benton's just not on on the usual in the usual groove. A penalty there where they usually don't make them. Very seldom. Here's Collett. He wants to throw. He's got a man open. Go ahead. Goheen at the 40, the 30, and he's caught from behind as he crosses the 30-yard line. 
down to the 27. He everything, Brendan Cook, to run him down and stop him from going all the way for the touchdown. That may be the little igniter that the Panthers needed. It was an interesting uh, offshoot of a, a play that a Benton usually runs, a little uh, slant pass. Instead, he went straight down the field, and uh, Collett hit him on the run. Minute and 35 to play in the first quarter. Pitch back to Godino, who's back in the ball game, and Robert rips it across the 35, uh, the 25, down inside the 25 to about the 22-yard line for a pickup on the play of five. So it's second down, five yards to go for the Panthers. That looks like the Panther offense right there. It really, uh, I don't know what effect it might have had that Godino got hurt, uh, but they, uh, certainly that pass play had a lot to do with them uh, looking a lot crisper now. The little igniter, that's all it takes sometime. Call it the quarterback, split Goheen wide to the right. Full bone, second man through. This is Shelnut. He breaks it across the 20, down inside the 15 to the 13, 12 yard line before he's dragged down. Kurt Shelnut takes it down inside the 20 yard line, inside the 15. It's another first down for the Panthers. And the slow man to get up this time is Brendan Cook, who had to come over from his position to make the stop, but we got a flag on the play. Again, they went over that left side of the, uh, uh, behind that left side of the line, and uh, this time looks like a, a holding, perhaps a, it looks like a 15-yard penalty. 15-yard penalty marked off. Let's see what the call is. That would be a clip. Clipping penalty called against the Panthers, so move the ball all the way back up to the 28-yard line, where it becomes uh, second down and nine, or second down and 12, rather. Second down, 12 to go for the Panthers. From the Catholic high 28, call it the quarterback. Spins, fakes, looks, throws, got a man wide open. Ryan Holter. Him. Ryan Holter, who has played excellent football the last two weeks. Ryan takes the ball down across the 20 to the 16, 17 yard line. We'll wait for him to spot the ball. They're changing it after every play because of this rain that's still coming down. And it's still steady out there. And it's brought every bug in the Saline Valley down here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right in our booth, I they're think. They're coming in, they're flying, they're dive bombing the windows, everything. Gonna measure for a first down here. Excellent call by Colin, excellent uh, uh, execution by the Panthers on that play. They're about a foot short. So it will be third down and about a foot for that first down. And this might be the place to go for the whole Magilla, as they used to say, Rob. Go for the whole ball of wax right here. You know they'll go for it on fourth down, so it might be an idea. Uh, Brad Collett showing good uh, work at, at the quarterback, throwing the ball very well. I understand that the, the Panthers worked a lot on their passing game this week, and uh, they're certainly showing it right now. And neither team's allowing this slight rain to dampen their enthusiasm for throwing the football. I believe that the Panthers have already picked up more yards passing tonight than they have all season combined, and I could be mistaken, but we'll check that out for you at halftime. Here we go, call it under center. Looks right, looks left, fakes, tries to break it up. Now does, he's into the secondary. He's gonna he's score. To the 10, the five, touchdown! Good block by Jake Goheen down near the goal line, sprung him for the last five yards, and all of a sudden the Benton Panthers are right back in this ball game. It looked like Collett was gonna be caught after he got the first down and maybe five yards past the line of scrimmage. He made a great sidestep move, and the ubiquitous Jake Goheen came in, laid ubiquitous? a beautiful block, <laughs> and Collett went in for the touchdown. You know what ubiquitous means, do yeah, you not? He's all over the place. He's huh? everywhere. What a great play that time by the quarterback Brad Collett looking for the end zone and what a superior block by Jake Goheen but good work all the way up and down the that line. That left side of the line again yeah. doing the job. It's, uh, it's uh, Dennis Bird at left tackle and uh, uh, McGee, David McGee at uh, left guard. And in to attempt the extra point, it's Heath Nix. The ball is down, the ball is kicked, the kick is up, kick is no good. Boy, it looked good from here. Well, it sure did. There's some flags down, so maybe they'll get a second shot. Hopefully it's against Catholic. One of, I don't mean that. They had too many men on the field. They will get another shot. And Indeed. they'll move the ball a yard closer. And Heath Nix gets a second opportunity. 
And I went, the coaches are down there looking at each other saying, what was wrong with that kick? And I'm with them. They're saying it wasn't that good. If it was good, they want to go ahead and take it and take the penalty on the kickoff. It looked like it was right through the middle. I would have thought from here. And if we don't have that bad a vantage point here at C.W. Lewis Stadium, believe me, we can see the goalpost. And now we get a timeout called by Benton. We have 12 seconds left to play in the first quarter. The score reads, the Little Rock Catholic Rockets 14, Benton 6. We'll be back after this commercial timeout. ahead the Panthers to kick 12 seconds left in the first quarter Robert Godino who missed a series on offense is back in he will do the kicking and back deep for Catholic can you make out the number Rob so Kittle. Kittle Kittle number 37 Chris Kittle is back deep here's the kick it's not to Kittle it's to the far sideline man Brad Chambers and he pops it up gets it across the 30 out to the 33 34 yard line where he is taken very unceremoniously to the ground by a whole host of maroon clad benton panthers who are really fired up again it's kind of like game the beginning of the game but they've got to stay fired up because they trail right now six seconds to play the clock will run out before they can get a playoff two one that's the end of the first quarter we'll be back the score reads 14 for little rock catholic eight for benton We'll be back after this 30-second timeout. All right, here we break the huddle. It's Catholic back <laughs> on the offense. They have the ball, first down 10 to go as we start the second quarter of action from C.W. Lewis Stadium. Back to pass is their quarterback, Freeman. He throws it downfield. It's complete to Cook. Cook's down the sideline. He may go all the way. Cook is going to go in for a touchdown from the 34-yard line. That makes it a what? A 66-yard play by Brendan Cook on a marvelous throw by Jody Freeman. Hit him wide open. He sidestepped a couple of tacklers and then tightrope down the sideline. 66 yards for the touchdown. And what a deflator that turns out to be. We've got us a... a crazy wild game that oh, was just a, a short pass over the middle in fact it looked like the pass was going right to Shane Smith of Benton but out of nowhere coming across the middle came Brendan Cook picked it off at full stride and uh, came all the way across the other side of the field and as you said trapes down the sidelines for the score he just he showed his speed on that play he tiptoed through the tulips and went down the sideline we have a timeout for an injury on the field so with timeout on the field and the score reading Catholic 20 Benton 8 Let's take this 30-second timeout for this commercial message. As the man used to say in the old movies, uh, Rob, what a revolting development this turned out to be. Wow. And you'd think on a rainy night, you know, they'd be sloshing around. They wouldn't, there wouldn't be much scoring, but already here... Uh, 10 seconds gone in the second quarter, and it's 20 to 8. Catholic leading, trying to make it 21 here. I don't know if they might go for two themselves on this play. Looks like they're going to. You had to say it, the field was in good condition, didn't you? Well, <laughs> credit to the uh, Benton uh, staff that, that it is, because we've had some pretty good rain today. Here's Tight two bone, points. two men's flank wide, flag down, pitch back, whistle blows. Let's do it again. And I would imagine that would be against the offense. And uh, I can see Panthers with hands in air pointing the other way. So they're saying, take it back. And it will be a five-yard walk-off. 
now they might come in and try to kick that. We'll the have way to they've been hitting, uh, the way they've been hitting Cook, they might just throw to him, huh? Three times he's caught the ball, 94 yards now, and they've just missed him once. That first play that uh, Daniel knocked down It's the only one they've missed when they've tried him. It is. Go for it. They're going to go for the two, but it will come from about the eight-yard line. Freeman, the quarterback, looks over the defense. Now he rolls right, looks to throw, has a man down but not open. And back on good defense that time was uh, Brad Chambers. That was Rick Daniels. I'm sorry, Rick there. Daniels back there on defense, and Rick knocked the ball down. Boy, you'd have to see this one to believe it, and the best way to see it is tune in Cable Vision 4 for the video playback Sunday or Monday evening at 7 p.m. Here's the kickoff. It's going deep. It comes to... I couldn't see who was carrying the football. Could you? Cliff Phillips, was it? Cliff Phillips uh, was the short man that time. Cliff gathered the ball in at about the 18-yard line and brought it back out to the 34, where it's first down, 10 to go for Benton's Panthers. And you're listening to Benton Panther Football on KAKI FM 107 in Benton. I'm Bill Powell, along with Rob Patrick. We hope you're enjoying the broadcast, but I must tell you, if you're a Panther backer, right now there's a little trepidation in your thought processes. It is still Collett, the quarterback, falls another on the fun. ground, another fumble, and Catholic has it again. Coming up with the fumble was number 96 of the Catholic uh, Rockets, John Zimmerman. John is a 5'9", 180-pound tackle, and he just happened to be in the right spot at the right time. And truthfully, it looked to me as if, I could be wrong, but it looked as if Brad just had the ball slip out of his hand that time. There, uh, on the handoff, he had trouble with the handoff on that play, and I don't know if it was going to be a pass play or what, but he got hit just after he'd uh, faked the handoff, if it was a fake, and uh, it was knocked loose. So it's first down and 10 to go for Catholic as they go back on the offense at the 33-yard line of Benton. Faked a handoff, went up, he gave it straight ahead. Into the line of scrimmage goes the fullback. Uh, that would be Chris Nolan. And Nolan straight up the middle got, uh, oh, maybe, what, two yards on the play. Call it second down and eight as they spot the ball directly on the 30-yard line. So it's second down, eight to go, pick up of two for Chris Nolan, the fullback as now Brendan Cook leaves the football field. He's replaced out there by Mark Walls, who plays the defensive corner and wide receiver. Walls splits wide to the right, and we have an equipment problem down there right at the second. Uh, is that Greg Mundy getting his headgear put back together? That's right. Greg Mundy with a little problem there. Uh, I tell you, Catholic's offensive line's been doing a good job particularly holding, of course, they've been running those fast, quick pass patterns, and uh, Benton really hadn't had a chance to penetrate, get any pressure on the it's pass. It's all finesse blocking. Here's Freeman on the, as he goes around, gets Great the ball man. away just as he was going down, and uh, he would have been stopped after a gain of about six. As it worked out, there's another seven yards tacked on to the end of that run, so it's first down, and we get a flag down on the play, and it's a late flag. I don't understand what this one is. That would indicate that it's against the defense. Yep. That's oh. illegal receiver downfield. No, it's an illegal forward pass. Oh, and I that see. That pitch uh, was uh, forward, uh, pitched forward. It, it looked pretty close. No wonder it was so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> he did a good job of pitching it right at the last minute, but uh, uh, Kittle had come up uh, even with him and it actually had to throw it forward to get it to him. So they'll mark it off, and it'll be from the point of the infraction, which still gives them a pickup on the play of about two yards, and it now becomes third down and five. They lose the down on that. That's the, the major factor on that. Instead of first down and 10 from down inside the 20-yard line, the ball comes back out. It's spotted down at the 28, and it's for third down, five yards to go for the Rockets. Coming in with the play is Brendan Cook, quarterback Jody Freeman, Stout squats in the huddle, tells the other nine players what the what they are planning on doing walks to the line of scrimmage looks things over cook split wide to the left almost looked like an offside on catholic that time 
no whistles as Freeman works his way down the line of scrimmage trying to get away from everybody, but Rodney Wright was right there to knock the ball carrier to the ground and stop this drive, but the uh, ball will be spotted at about the 28-yard line. No gain on the play. That was as well as Benton has uh, uh, defense that option so far. Uh, they've been in, uh, real conscious of the uh, of the game between the tackles, but they've had more trouble with Catholics outside game than they have had with other teams that are really uh, uh, quicker than Catholic is. Catholic's doing a good job of blocking that, sealing the end. And, and it's uh, all finesse blocking, too, because yeah. they're, very... they're outweighed by a, a big bunch. We get another timeout call as Catholic has some, some confusion on their play selection. So with timeout on the field and the score reading, Little Rock Catholic 20, the Benton Panthers 8, let's take time for this 60-second commercial pause. Just taking a look at the sideline on this, uh, the Benton Panther sideline, they really look flat, uh, Rob. Well, they've never been this far behind. It's uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they'll react. Uh, Benton going, or Catholic going for it on a big fourth and five here. Fourth down, five to go. Freeman rolls to his right, pitches back to Kittle. Kittle's wide open. He's down for the first down, down across the 15 to the 10-yard line. Again, Kittle. They had trouble with that option again. Great execution that time by Freeman and by Kittle, and Kittle took the ball wide on the flank. There was nobody out there to contest him. He cut it up, burst uh, through the 20 and the 15. It was knocked down right at the 10-yard line. It's kind of hard to tell whether that's inside or outside the 10, but it's very close. They can make a first down without going into the end zone. So it's that close to the 10-yard line by about a foot. Straight ahead handoff that time to the big fullback who keeps powering down, and he gets a touchdown. That's Chris Fliss. Brad Chambers. Wasn't it number 26? Or was well, it? Yeah, I guess you're right. I was looking at 28. Yeah, 26 was the ball carrier, Brad Chambers, and Brad looked like he was down at the line of scrimmage, kind of wiggled his shoulders, wiggled his hips, and the next thing you know, he was squirting into the end zone for the score. It's now 26 to 8, and what a deflator this has been for the... Benton Panther homecoming tonight. Once again, they will kick for the extra point. Ball down, ball good, kicked, and this time it's no good. Wide to the right. So the score stays. Little Rock Catholic 26, Benton 8. With 8 minutes and 57 seconds to go in the second quarter, let's take time for this 60-second commercial timeout. kickoff after the last score by the Little Rock Catholic Rockets. The kick is away. On the far sideline to get the football is Jamie Jones, the man who started at quarterback tonight. He runs the ball toward the middle of the field with nowhere to go, and he's knocked down just across the 15-yard line where it becomes first down and 10 to go from the 15, let's call it. It's Brad Collett back in at quarterback, and the same group of running backs in there now. Kurt Shelnett, Robert Godino, and Randy Wright split Jake Goheen wide to the right as the Panthers slowly come to the line of scrimmage. They don't have their usual set today. Well, they haven't been this far behind before. They haven't given up this many points before. It's 26 to 8, and they've been prone to uh, mistakes tonight. Brad Collett attempted to hit Jake Goheen, but just as Jake was making his cut for the football, his feet came out from under him. He went to the ground, and the ball fell ineffectively to the turf, where it's now second down and 10. As coming into the ball game is Chris Ramsey. He will come in and replace Goheen. Ramsey, again, splits wide to the right, and it is still Brad Collett at quarterback. He looks over the Catholic defense, comes up to the line of scrimmage, Barks out that signal, turns, spins, fakes, hits a wide open. It's Drew Yoakum on the ring. Drew Yoakum, the tight end, yeah. I saw the three and I was wondering how Shulman got out there that quickly. I know he's fast. 
but uh, it was Drew Yoakum who pulled the ball in. He's knocked down at the 30, where it becomes a first and 10 for the Panthers from their own 30-yard line. I think, you know, that, that, that initial fumble that gave Catholic the ball when it looked like the Panthers were going to drive for a score really took the stuffings out of Benton right here in the first half, and they've really never recovered. 8.20 to play in the second quarter. Call it the quarterback. Fakes once, fakes twice. Now he hands off to Godino, who powers out for six yards. And there is a bad fight under there for the football. Godino's got it. And everybody in white and yellow, which is the Rocket Road uniform color, wants that football. They were grabbing it on that play. Their helmets are a bright yellow. Their trousers are bright yellow. The uh, jerseys are white with purple numerals and uh, yellow trim. So it's second down and four yards. Give Godino a six-yard pickup on that play. And once again, Collett looks over that defense, hands off straight ahead to Godino, who gets out for another yard or two before he is ripped to the ground. Getting up off the bottom of the pile is Dean Roberts and uh, Hector Devino were the two men in on the tackle. He gets up with a third down now and two. Third and two for the Panthers, and they need a first down and something exciting to happen. Or this, they're in deep jeopardy of getting blown out of this They've game. They've got a lot of time if they can just stick to their knitting, not make any mistakes, and go ahead and drive this ball. So they're going to go for the first. Fake to hand off, fake to pass, and was smothered by a very aggressive defensive unit of the uh, Catholic highs and there again there was Pirioli coming in to make the stop from his in position he's 5'11 205 pounds and he has been defensively a giant this evening that's a good point they're very aggressive on defense they're uh, quick and they're able to shuck off those blocks of those big uh, offensive linemen they've done a good job uh, lately of stopping the ball uh, stopping the ball carriers Stop so running game. fourth down and three, and Benton will have to kick the ball away. Ramsey back to kick. He has the ball, and he powers a line drive that hits and bounces and is covered and smothered as the first man down on the tackle was uh, number 32, Chris Carroll, who on the fly took the ball carrier. Actually, that's Brett Mills. Was it Brett Mills? Uh -huh. Excuse me. And really knocked. That's uh, Chris Carroll plays for Catholic. The ball carrier was Mark Walls, and coming down hard, Brett Mills, and he really stuffed him, didn't he? First and 10 for Catholic. The ball is placed at their own 26-yard line. Six minutes and nine seconds to play in this first half here at C.W. Lewis Stadium with the Catholic High Rockets leading Benton by a score of 26 to eight. And if you're just tuning in, you heard right. 26-8 is the score. Straight ahead handoff to the fullback. Chris Nolan, and he powers it out close to the 35-yard line. Pick up a four on the play. Second down and six. Mundy was in on the tackle, as was Roger Barker and Heath Nix that time. And you know, the man they pretty much uh, neutralized this evening has been Kelsey Dedman. Well, I tell you, they're, they're running uh, the other way a lot of the time, but they're, and they're running this option that uh, really causes problems because of the... the uh, threat of Brandon Cook and Mark Walls on the outside. They got the wide splits now again and squirting through for a first down after he'd been hit twice at the line of scrimmage is number 28 of the, uh, yeah, 28 of the Catholic Rockets. That's uh, Chris Fliss. Chris Fliss, and it looked like he was knocked down at the line of scrimmage and then just seemed to squirt like he was coming out of a toothpaste. He's a sophomore. Uh, and he looks a lot bigger than 5'10", 170. He came out far enough for another first down. It's first down 10 to go from the 42-yard line of the Catholic Rockets. They have the lead and the football. Handoff, second man through. That's Bliss again. And you're right, he does look bigger than, what have they got him listed at? 5'10", 170. I think that time it was Chambers. He's 26 and Bliss is 28, and it's hard to tell the difference. Yeah. Well, that's no excuse. I should know the difference by now, you know. <laughs> but you're right. They do look a great deal alike. Chambers is 5'10", 166. Fliss is 5'10", 170, which may or may not be an accurate uh, reading of his weight and height, but he sure looks bigger than that. Pick up on the play of five, four. Call it second down and six. Now Kelsey Dedman had a little trouble with his helmet. So 
they've got an official timeout for that. I, I talked a little bit about this. They haven't optioned on this series, but uh, it's really hurt Benton before. The problem is, is they've got to cover uh, Walls or Cook, and that takes the cornerback and, and one of the safeties usually out of the play. And they can't force that pitch. And uh, it's really uh, given Benton some trouble because they haven't had that extra support guy out there. They've had to keep them. They've had to stay honest with the wide receivers out there being so deadly. You have to wonder about all these helmets popping off, though. What's happening in those pileups down there? I hope they, if they make Deadman mad, I hope they realize what they're doing. They're, we're going to get a delay of game penalty called against the Catholic. I think maybe somebody lined up in the neutral zone for Catholic. You might be right. Although you were watching the 25 second clock. I glanced down at it and saw it blink off, so I jumped to a conclusion, which is about all the exercise I get. Nope, offside. You were right. They lined up offside. It looked to be Lewis Jones, who was in at a wide receiver's position for the uh, Catholic Rockets. 4.22 to go now in the first quarter as the clock ticks down. The uh, 25 second clock is already down to 12. Now they break the huddle if and you're head a to the line fan, of scrimmage. You almost hate to see them have long yardage to go because that's when they usually go to one of, the, one of those quick receivers. Mark Walls split right. Freeman works down. Little look in intended for Walls was thrown into the ground incomplete. Nobody could get to it. So it's third down and 11 now. I think I neglected to identify that after the penalty, it was second down 11. It is now third and 11 with four minutes exactly left to play here in this first half. And we still have this very, very steady downpour. Not hard, but certainly steady. And uh, But the crowd on the uh, west side of the stadium, the, the visitor side, has really picked up. They've got almost a full house over there. And there is undoubtedly a full house on this side for this ball game. And right now, the visiting team is having all the best of it. Catholic looking for a first down. Freeman is, is wide open. He got around the end again, and he's got another first down as he picks up 12 on the play. And it's amazing how the Panther defense simply disappeared as he made his way toward that end. The backs and the linebackers had all dropped off, expecting a pass. He came to the far end of the line around where Richard Gaston was. There was nobody else there. In, I'm not Richard Gaston, but Will Connell. And once the offensive line took care of Connell, that was the end of any defensive ploy that the Panthers could have other than bringing up and trying to stop. And by the time they did, he had taken the ball all the way to the Benton 48, where it's another first down and 10 to go. And Freeman is having a great half of football for a high school quarterback. Handoff this time as the man just steps across a prostate, prostrate uh, Aaron Windsor and Kelsey Dedman. Brad Windsor was the ball carrier, and uh, he just walked his way, literally walked his way for five yards. So it's first down, second down, and five to go for Catholic now. Leaving the ball game is number 26 chambers and splitting out wide is a new man whose number I cannot read from this angle. Anyway, Freeman hands off to the second man through and he literally carries Will Connell for a first down. Connell had him around the waist, was doing everything he could to get him down, but uh, number 43, I believe, was the ball carrier. That's and Rory Fitzpatrick, uh, back that a uh, junior that started last week against Bryant in the place of Chambers, who was one of the players who was uh, uh, in as a replacement. We have a timeout on the field as the Benton Panthers want to talk about what's happening. Two minutes, 53 seconds left to play in the first half. The score, the Catholic Rockets, 26, Benton, 8. We'll be back with more Benton Panther football after this commercial timeout. Rob, the interesting thing that's happening now, the Catholic Rockets are getting to to play an awful lot of people, which is going to keep them fresh for the ball game because they're out to this big 18-point lead. Well, Benton needs to uh, make a, show some enthusiasm and make some uh, make some things happen to get their get back in this ball game. 
And now it is Catholic, after using a lot of sweeps and passes early in the game, have gone to power football. And it's working. They've got picked up four on that one. I believe that was Fitzsimmons again, wasn't it? Uh, well, Nolan. Nolan that time. Nolan on the carry. And he picked up four, second down and six. And in all truth, it's a very sluggish looking Benton Panther that walks toward their defensive alignment. They don't, they're not springing back, they're not walking back with any enthusiasm. It's like they're looking directly at that scoreboard. That really gives uh, gives Catholic an advantage because they depend on quick blocks anyway. And if, they're, if Benton's the least bit slow off the block, the Catholic's going to beat him to the punch. Freeman calls the signals, fakes. Now he's got a little reverse going here, and it's going to work again. Coming over to make the tackle was uh, Billy Lincoln, but not until Chris Kittle had picked up about uh, 12 more yards, taking the ball all the way down to the Benton 23, where it's first down, 10 to go from the 23-yard line. And Kittle hid the ball in his arms, pretended like he didn't even have it. Everybody uh, moved toward Freeman, the quarterback, who was still faking at the line of scrimmage. That was almost an eye formation type of wingback uh, trap. It really was. The way against the flow. They're in a straight bone this time. Freeman fakes to the first man. Now he wants to throw. He goes in. It's almost picked off as coming up to make the defensive play was Rick Daniel, the intended receiver that time, Brendan Cook. And maybe they got a little cocky throwing to Cook because there was a crowd around Cook. Unfortunately, the Panther couldn't come up with the interception. Daniel had a beat on it, but he just didn't uh, time his jump right. He was coming down as the ball hit his hands and he couldn't hang on. It's second down and 10, as the Rockets, uh, looking very confident, work toward that line of scrimmage. It's Mark Walls back in as the wide receiver, as Cook goes to the sideline now. Walls splits wide to the right, straight bone. Freeman fakes once, fakes twice, tries to cut it up. He's defense pretty well this time, and taken down just as he crosses the 20-yard line. Give him the 20 call it a pickup on the play of three yards. Rodney Wright was up there to make the tackle. Well, after a pickup of three, it now becomes third down and seven. Well, give him four on it, call it third down and six as they spot the ball now at the 19-yard line. That time, Rodney Wright got outside of the, contain of the uh, containment, got outside of the uh, blocking scheme that, uh, and was able to force Freeman inside on that option keeper and made the tackle. Freeman brings his Rockets to the line of scrimmage. He stands and throws the little alley-oop. There's a battle for the ball, and it's intercepted by the Rocket, by the Panthers. But wouldn't you know, just as he picked off the ball, Rodney Wright picked the batted ball. Rick Daniel knocked it in the air. Rodney Wright came down with it, and as he was starting to run, and believe me, there was nobody between him and the goal except green grass. He slipped on the wet turf and went to the ground. But at least it's a turnover in favor of the Panthers, but there's only 46 seconds left to play here in this quarter. I want to tell you, you're listening to Benton Panther football on KAKI FM 107 in Benton. We have a, another equipment timeout on the field. This time it's for Cook, and Cook is holding his mouth as he runs toward the sideline. He wanted to talk to the officials about something. I hope he's not complaining about getting hit. This is football, isn't it? <laughs> I he may have caught a, a finger in the eye or something on that to, uh, as uh, Daniel went up to knock it away. But we have a first and 10 for the Panthers, but the clock is running. We're down to 40 seconds, and they're a long, long way from the end zone, 85 yards away. It would take a miracle for them to score. Collett is still the quarterback. He looks to throw, does throw. Ball is batted. Goheen makes a tremendous effort to try to get it and just had it roll off his fingertips as he went to the ground. Back on defense, it was Mark Walls who leaped high to tip the ball, and Goheen made a valiant effort to salvage it before it could hit the ground, but it was not to be. So we're down to a second and 10 with 30 seconds on the clock, but the clock is stopped at any rate now. That play might work again if they ran it and pumped faked to him there where Walls came up and, and then just hit him on the fly. Ramsey now splits wide to the left this time. Fake handoff. Now a handoff straight ahead into the line of scrimmage to Kurt Shelton. 
And Kurt takes it out across the 15 to about the 17 yard line. Pick up on the play of three where it's uh, it is uh, third down and seven now as the ball is marked ready for play with 11 seconds left on the clock. Panthers are going to try to get one more playoff before the end of this half. Collett looks down with three, two, one. Did he get it off? No, he's too late, I think, as Goheen breaks through the middle. Oh, I'm sorry, it was Shellett, Shellnut that broke through the middle, got it out to the 25-yard line for a pickup on the play of about six, seven yards, but uh, wasn't enough. The clock winds down. That's the end of the half, and after... 24 minutes of football here at C.W. Lewis Stadium. The Catholic High Rockets leave the field in an exuberant trot, owning a 26 to 8 lead over the Benton Panthers. We'll be back with our halftime after this 90 second commercial timeout. Uh, Benton can come back. I think it would be safe to say that they are going to be some kind of football team the rest of the year because, quite honestly, this is a very good Catholic high rocket oh, football yeah, they're, team. They're not rated fourth in the state for nothing. Uh, and they were rated high from the very beginning. Benton surprised a lot of people by going 4-0, and, and they'll have to uh, – the conference season begins next week, and that's what they're really playing for. That's the important part of the schedule anyway. And, those, uh, as Coach Fight says, those uh, rankings will take care of themselves if you take care of things in the conference season. He said uh, the polls are for the fans, and they will be taken care of simply by your performance on the field. Here's the run up and the kick. The second half is underway. The ball is deep. It's back to Robert Cadino, who takes it on the fly at the 10, 15, out to the 20-yard line, across the 20, still on his feet. Breaks some tackles, two tackles, three tackles out to the 30 to 34 yard line before he's finally brought down by several Catholic High Rockets primary on the tackle was number 99 getting up off the bottom of the pile and 99 for Catholic High School is Tom Rawlings a six foot 172 pound sophomore making his second tackle on a kickoff tonight so it's first and ten for the Panthers from their own 34 Jake Goheen splits wide to the left it is still Brad Collett at quarterback. He spins, hands off to Shallot, Shallot rather, and Shallot just barely breaks the 35. Pick up on the play of a yard, make it second down and nine. Once again, very aggressive tackling by the Catholic high defense. Jake Goheen comes out of the ball game. Now split wide to the left this time, or right this time, is Chris Ramsey for the Panthers. Collett looks over the defense, looks out at Ramsey, looks down the left side of his line of scrimmage, fakes a handoff, and then gives straight ahead to uh, Godino, who pops out for another three, where it becomes third down and seven. This is tough yardage for us for a wishbone offense. They've got to get good yardage on first down. Failed to do it that time. Picked up three on second down, so it's third down and six for the Panthers. And they need some kind of offensive shove from that offensive line of McGee and Everett, McCampbell, Teague, and Bird. Fakes a handoff. Second man through, and Collett is just eaten alive as he tries to give That's the ball idea. off to Randy Wright, who got nothing on the play, and it's fourth down and six. They gave that to Wright. Yeah. Looked, I thought I saw a yellow flag. They really roughed up. Uh, uh, Collett on that play. Several of the Catholic Rockets hit Collett after he had handed the ball off to Wright. And I mean, he really got pounded from front and back, but no avail, no flag. Chris Ramsey is back to punt for the Panthers. And deep, of course, is Cook. But they kick away from Cook, get the ball over to Walls, who breaks a tackle. He may go all the way. Walls takes the kickoff. Broke a tackle, broke it outside, got behind the wall, and took it all the way for the touchdown. 62-yard punt return. He caught it on the run, made a move to the outside, and got around the last man was Chris Ramsey, the punter. Broke his tackle, or his attempt at a tackle, and scored. And, and uh, I'd say Catholic has set the tempo in the second half, both defensively and now offensively, upping their margin. 32-8, to 
and uh, now have a chance to make it 33 today. Roger Barker and Craig Rogers both tried to get pursuit angles that time on Mark Walls, but to no avail, and Walls simply waltzed into the end zone practically untouched. He broke one tackle, got outside, and that was the end of the game or end of the run because it was all over at that point. The extra point attempt is wide to the right. We're ready for the kickoff after the Catholic touchdown. The run up, the kick is away. It's coming to the far side, gathered in over there by Cliff Phillips, who breaks it out across the 35 to the 40, 45, and he's knocked out of bounds. They'll mark it at about the 46-yard line, where it's first down, 10 to go for the Benton Panthers from their own 46, but uh, maybe, or 47, let's mark it now, as they finally step, uh, place the football, but that may be too little too late. They really need to do something positive just for for themselves, for, their, for next week, as much as anything for the rest of this half. Coach Dwight Fight, who is not a kind of a guy who looks down, is sitting on his haunches down here behind the line of scrimmage with a look of bewilderment on his face. It's Collett at quarterback. Collett fakes and hands off to Godino, who slashes through the right side, getting the ball down inside the Catholic 45. They'll mark it down at the 44, where it is second down and one. A pickup of nine on the play for Godino, who's having another good night as Jake Goheen was in the ball game, comes out, and going back in now for Goheen is Jason Blagg, who splits wide to the left. Collin, under quarterback. Yes, sir. We'll go with this play, and then I'll make my comment. Okay. Hand off to Godino. He breaks through. He needs to get a block. He can't get it, but he's going to run through Cook for another three or four yards. Blagg tried to block Cook, and Cook just stepped around him, but Godino slashed through the middle again and made a excellent pickup that time. I didn't get the yardage on 17 it, but 17-yard yards, so. 17 yard pickup for Godino, and that's uh, that's the kind of thing they've been needing all night long. Well, I look for him now just to go back to the basics and uh, try to do some positive things, and that's pretty much what they've done. Gone off tackle twice, and they picked up good yardage. They're just gonna try and execute their offense now and, and uh, work on improving. Save a little, uh, save a little face as it were. Attempted pass that time by Collett, but out there on defense and doing an absolutely superb job defensively for the uh, Catholic High Rockets was Mike Perpola, Perpola, who uh, literally broke that one up before it had a way to go. Goheen back in the ball game, and he will split wide to the left this time. The standard uh, offensive running back situation, Randy Wright, Kurt Shelnett, and Robert Godino in behind uh, Brad Collett, the quarterback. He looks left and right. Big line surge by the Catholic Rockets, a handoff to Godino, who pops it straight through, and he picks up, oh, maybe four yards on the play. Who is this mask man that just walked in behind me? How you, how you doing, donkey? Nobody knows why I call you donkey, do they? <laughs> you a policeman now? I will never sleep well again. Hang on. I'll talk to you in a second. Yeah, pick up a four on the play. Make it third down now and six. And the Panthers need a play right now. Need something. Let's see what they can do. It's Collett, the quarterback. Spins, fakes. He wants to throw. He's swarmed. He's not going to get it away. He's buried back across the 30 at the 32-yard line. As coming in to make the finishing tackle was Gary Hogue after Good Collett had been propped up by uh, several of the Catholic High Rockets, namely, primarily, number 65, uh, Chad Avance. And I know Chad's dad, and I know that made him happy. Chad Avance, Nick Avance, do you know Nick? I, I bet that's his dad. If it's not his dad, it's his uncle. Uh, Chad Avance was in there to make the main hit that time to put Benton in trouble. Benton's gonna go for it on fourth and 13. Fake, Collins gonna get wrapped up before he can get it away. He was looking to throw, but coming in on defense was Hector Devino, and Hector brought him down from behind. Collett never felt him back there, wrapped him up and put him to the turf. So it's a turnover for the Panthers. 
The ball goes over to Catholic on downs. We've got seven minutes and 14 seconds left to play in the third quarter. Catholic has the football back first and 10 from their own 32 yard line. And it's heartbreaking right now to see the effort with no, uh, no benefit from it on the part of the Panthers. Catholic uh, really on that defensive stand, they were full charge and uh, just breaking through the blocks of Fenton and beating them at the line of scrimmage. Uh, they, they're a very impressive team. And they still have their first string offense in. Handoff this time is to Chris Nolan, the fullback, and he burst out across the 40 yard line to about the, well, first down, they say, without even looking at it, to the 42 yard line, a pickup of 10 on the play. It's first and 10 from their own 42 now. As Catholic is just having their way right now with the Benton Panthers. And I don't think Benton is this bad, but I do believe that Catholic is this good. Once again, Freeman looks, hands off as the man burst outside, and Freeman is taking an awful lot of people outside with him as he fakes to the first man through and then waits and hands off or pitches back. That time on the carry, it was number 28 for the Catholic High Rockets. Chris Files, Phils, Phyllis, isn't it? Phyllis? Fliss. Fliss. I have a hard time saying that. Chris Fliss was the ball carrier, and he picked up eight, so it's second down and two from the 49-yard line. Second down and two for the Rockets. Freeman hands off to the first man through, and he powers out across the 50, inside the 50 to the 47-yard line, where we have another first down. Nolan was the ball carrier. Chris Nolan, 5'11", 210-pound fullback running out of that uh, wishbone. And when he gets to the line of scrimmage with the kind of blocking he's been getting tonight, uh, he is a dangerous running back. 5'45", left to play here in the third quarter. 32-8 to eight is our score. The Rockets lead Benton. Man in motion this time for the Rockets. Hand off once again to Nolan, and he pops down for maybe two, a pickup of two on the play. So it's now second down and eight. And the ball carrier that time, excuse me, was Hogue for Catholic High. Second down, eight yards to go as Catholic just grinding it out any way they want. They go wide, they go inside, they throw the football, almost anything they want to do. As Mark Walls comes in, he replaces Brendan Cook, who goes to the sideline. Cook and Walls pretty much alternate from that wide receiver position to uh, bring the plays in. Walls splits wide to the left. Man in motion to the right is Fliss. Handoffs this time goes nowhere as in to Barry. The ball carrier was Deadman and Aaron Windsor and Heath Nix, Roger Barker. That was Nolan that time. He got one yard on the play. So it's now third down and seven yards to go for Catholic. But the ball is at the 44-yard line of the Benton High Panthers. And if they get any yardage this time, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised to see them go on fourth down. Would you? Well, they've, just, they've been able to do just about anything they've wanted to at this point. They're moving, up, moving the ball up the middle. They'll probably run this option this time. They've had great success with that. Option right. Quarterback Freeman keeps the ball and absolutely goes nowhere as uh, that time they ran it to the short side of the field away from the split receiver and they didn't have as much room to run and good defensive play uh, stopped him short of anything. Rodney Wright was the man who read it all the way and came up to make the tackle. No gain on the play. Fourth down, six yards to go. And let's see, it looks like they brought in their punter. And they have. Number nine, Bo Bear, goes back in deep punt formation. Back still, to, yeah. Still just a steady rain. It looks like it's picked up a little bit now. Godino is back deep for the Panthers. Almost blocked that time. Jason Game Black within a nickel. Real close. But it's Godino picking the ball off. He breaks one tackle, runs through an arm tackle, and gets the ball out near the 15 before he's pounded to the ground by four of the Catholic High Rockets, Benton Panthers. It hasn't worked the way they had hoped at all. It's Brad Collett still in at quarterback, and the starting line of uh, starting running backs are still in there. Here is Godino bursting out 
across the 20, across the 25 to about the 26 yard line before he stopped. Pick up on the play of nine yards. So it's second down and one and some fresh bodies come into the ball game for the uh, Benton Panthers leaving the game. Number 61. That is uh, that's McGee. Michael Teague is 61. 61 Teague. Yeah, taken out of the ball game. And Collett is going to go for this first down. I imagine straight ahead. He does hand off. That is. Well, you couldn't ask Godino. any more from Robert Godino. He's Godino put out a great deal of effort tonight. Carrying people, pushing people, pounding people. And he takes it out across the 30 to the 34 yard line where it's first and 10. How is Godino doing on yardage? Nine carries, point? 90 yards. Nine carries, 90 yards. That's 10 a pop. That's pretty good average. And very close to what he's averaging for the year. He's got another bit to go, I know, but still in all, Robert Godino has done everything asked of him tonight. It's uh, just one of those things. It wasn't the Pan or it hasn't been the Panthers' night to this point. Hand off to Shelnut. He breaks a tackle, breaks another, breaks through the running, the tackle of two or three, and he's finally hauled down, but not before he picks up eight yards on the play. Whereas, so it's second down and two now, as is Mark Walls. Nope, Kittle's back in. He is the cornerback out to the far right side on the split wide receiver at this point. Ramsey. Hand off to Godino, and Godino came within a half stride of going a long way with that one. He got the first down, picked up six on the play, brought the ball out to the 49-yard line, but had he been able to step over the swinging arm of Mike Pierpoli, he would have gone all the way because there was nobody between him and the goal once he passed him. But Pierpoli grabbed a shoelace and brought him down. But it's first and ten for the Panthers as they're trying to get a little offense into this ball game for themselves and a little pride now. Here is Godino again running behind, good blocking and just burrowing his way forward for about three. He's getting very close to that 100 mark again. 11 carries, 98 yards. Shelnut hasn't carried the ball much at all this evening. Eight, he? eight carries, he's got 46 but, yards. This is it. Second down, eight yards to go after that two yard pickup by Robert Godino. Break the bone this time to the Panthers. Put Shelnut out wide, hand off to Shelnut. He's met as he tries to get outside by three of the Catholic High Rockets. Primary among those three was number 65 for Catholic High. That is uh, Chris Avance again, who's play Chad Avance rather, 5'8, 181 pound senior. Getting a little playing time tonight, making his presence felt. He was one of those that started against Bryant last night and instead of one of the uh, players that. Uh, uh, missed because of the grades, and uh, he played very well against Bryant, from what I understand. Loss of two on the play. It's third down and ten for the Panthers this time. Back to pass is Collett. He throws it out to Godino on a pitch out, and Godino lowered his head and tried to power through a tackle, but he hit and popped and bounced. Fourth down. One yard to go. Parker into the ball game for Robert Godino. Godino was shaken up on that last hit when he hit head on with a Catholic defender. So it's fourth down, one yard to go. Godino on the bench. Let's see who gets the football. It's handed off to Shelnut. He's going to be stopped okay. short of the first down. Been very impressed tonight with Catholic's ability to make penetration defensively against this very good Benton Panther offensive line. They've just been in the Benton backfield quite a bit tonight, and there again, they were right there to meet Shelnut just after he got the hold of the football. They read very well. They look and they smell and they read very well, almost like they knew what was coming. But that's good. That's good coaching that'll do that for you. So the Catholic High Rockets take over first and ten. The ball will be at their own 43 yard line. And that might be. The last gasp tonight for the Panthers. Uh, that might just do them in as it was. It is still Freeman at quarterback. Nope, I'm sorry. Got a new quarterback in there this time. Brady, Brady and he hands the ball off to uh, number 26, Brad Chambers, who is knocked down for a loss of about a yard and a half. Call it two on the play, make it second down and 12. But uh, the Catholic high bench is now empty. In the ball game is John Zimmerman on offense. Not John Zimmerman, excuse me. Uh, Cole. Platkan is one of the wide receivers. He's going wide to the left and now is replaced in the ballgame. 
no wonder he's going wide left. He was leaving, leaving the field. But uh, they have a whole new lineup in there, does Catholic High. And a straight ahead handoff this time with the carry. It's number 48, Philip Kickpour, Nick Poor, and he pops out for about uh, six yards, seven yards, make it third down and four yards to go. Nick Poor, N I K P O U R, Philip Nick Poor, a 5'11, 187 pound senior. That's something, too. Catholic has a great number of seniors on their football team. He's got a large squad. And a very, very big squad. I don't know how many they're dressed out, but it looked like uh, the whole parish <laughs> came down. It's third down, four yards to go for a first down for Catholic as they attempt to put the coup de gras on the Benton Panthers here as we've got the clock running down to 10-13 and we will get a delay of game penalty called against the Rockets. That'll make it third down and nine. That's the that's what they're doing right now is getting these young guys some uh, playing time against a good team and also just running out the clock as much as they can. Yeah. And uh, you're right about playing time. They're going to play maybe uh, 30 kids on offense tonight, and that's not going to hurt them any at any degree later on down the year. Brady is uh, the quarterback right now, Justin Brady, a junior. He and uh, uh, Jody Freeman had a uh, real battle for the starting spot at the beginning of the year. Freeman pretty much got the, the nod because he was a senior, and he's really performed well. But Brady playing last week because Freeman was out with a bruised uh, back, uh, hit that uh, game-winning touchdown pass to Cook. Freeman. He's, uh, he's a good one. Brady, the quarterback, hands off to number 26, Brad Chambers, who has wrestled to the ground before he can even get started. In on the tackle was Greg Mundy, 43-yard line, just about where they started this whole offensive series uh, at first down or so ago. The ball is kicked to Goheen. He fakes and now hands off to Godino on the reverse. Godino lowers his head and powers through. For Benton now is Jamie Jones, and uh, Jamie will try to stir the pot a little bit and get some offense going here. Starting lineup still in the ball game. Randy Wright, Kirk Schildt, Mark Robert Godino in the backfield. Handoff this time is to Godino, and he powers out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Pick up on the play of seven, so it's second down and three to go. Got Greg Little in there at uh, fullback. Uh, Little's in at full now? Uh, okay. So it's Greg Little now replacing Randy Wright at fullback. Second down, three to go. I have Godino now with 113 yards on uh, 13 carries. Now we got to break uh, Shelnut loose for a couple here to get him back up to that. It's Yoakum, McGee, Everett, McCampbell, Teague, Bird, and Smith across the line. The ball is handed off to Shelnut. He pops it out to the 35 yard line, pick up of two. Make it third down now and one to go. Third and one for the first down. And if there was ever a time that the Benton Panthers needed a first down, that time is now. They could really use a first down. Third down, one to go. The ball is on their own 35-yard line. Uh, it's been a very discouraging evening for them. Catholic up, stacking on the line of scrimmage. The handoff is to... Shellnut, I Shellnut, and I believe he's got the first down as he takes it out to the 39. Well advanced for a first down. First and 10 for the Panthers, and those have been kind of few and far between tonight. How many is that for them? I've got them with nine, not officially, of course, and uh, it's not really been the, the, the fact that they haven't been able to move the ball, although they've had some trouble with that. It's just that the turnover's early, and uh, the big punt return really hurt them. The big plays by Catholic has been the problem. Here's Godino getting outside. He's got a first down across the 50 down to the 47 yard line where Godino picks up about 15 yards on that run. Godino and Shelnut, uh, they keep running hard all night long. Uh, Godino down again. Well, there was another, another big collision and Godino slow getting up standing football game on defense tonight for the Rockets. 5'9", 180 pound senior. Really done an outstanding. Well, the whole rocket defense has been excellent this evening. First and ten for the Panthers. Looking for a score. Handoff to Sheldon. He breaks it down, down inside the 40-yard line before he's pulled down as he twisted and turned his way for a pickup on the play of about seven yards. Make it second down and three as Kurt Sheldon that time got a good move, a couple of blocks at the line of scrimmage primarily, but Dwight Everett 
and David McGee had picked up seven. So it's second down and three to go. Clock running down to seven minutes and 30 seconds now left in this football game. Straight ahead handoff this time to... Uh, I believe that was Shellnut again. They've no. got uh, Greg they, Rogers in the ball game now in place of uh, Godino. That was Shellnut. He gets the first down as he moves the ball down to the 36-yard line of Catholic. So it's first and 10 for the Panthers. And they may go to Shelton now quite a bit. Yeah, we probably won't see Godino anymore. He's uh, had a rough night and really performed as well as anybody on the Benton team. Shelton this time just hurdles across the line of scrimmage. He tried to step through, was hit six as uh, he picks up four. So it's second down, six yards to go for the Panthers. They have the ball down to the 37-yard line, or, I'm sorry, the 32-yard line of Catholic High, and Catholic still very tight on defense, stacking everything in tight. Fakes a handoff, now gives to Shelnut. He spins and wiggles away from a couple of would-be tacklers and trips and falls. Finally, after he was hit by about three people, the last man to lay a glove on him was number 45, that Michael Pierpoli again. And he is some kind of player, this fella. He's a good one. Again, Benton just trying to run their base offense, make some good things happen here, come out with the, maybe get a score. We've got a timeout now by Catholic. Uh, the Cat, the Benton Panthers attempted a pass to uh, Brian Holder, who was in the ball game. It fell incomplete. So we have a fourth down and three yards to go for Benton. The ball is at the Little Rock Catholic 29-yard line now. Fourth and three. Stand up. Pass out to Goheen. Goheen breaks it down across the 25 to about the 22-yard line, where after he was on the ground, he was hit by one of the Rockets and really punished. Gets up a little bit slow, but it's another first down for the Panthers. And that's one thing about the Rockets. They're not intimidated. They will hit you. They're very physical. They are. They may not be as big as they have been in other years, but they do hit just as hard. And that, to Coach Davis's credit, is uh, an attribute. That's what this game of football is all about. It's the hit or the hitty, and believe me, it is more fun to be the hitty. By golly, there's Godino back in the ball game. <laughs> Still doing what he does best, ripping off yardage as he plowed his way across, through, and over a one tackler and was finally hauled down, but not until he had picked up six yards. So it's second down, four yards to go for the Panthers as they have the ball now just outside the 15-yard line of Catholic. Put it at, oh golly, what would you say? It's hard to tell from this call angle. 16. 16, where the ball is. Let's call it the 16-yard line. Second down and four. Here's Shelnut as he breaks it across the 15, down inside to about the 13-yard line where it will become third down and two. So Shelnut gets another carry. And uh, the pa the Rockets swarm to the ball oh, very well, don't they? They do indeed. They're, they're an impressive team, and they uh, deserve their fourth rank ranking. And uh, they always are a team to contend with when it comes to state championship time. They've and, won a few. And on this night, Benton really has not been themselves. Whether it was the breaks or what, I don't know. Here's the quarterback, Jones, trying to get outside. He is outside. He's got the first down and works his way very, very close. Nope, they say he stepped out of bounds. They knocked him out at about the two, but uh, the official right there, Johnny on the spot, says that he uh, the eight, I believe. Yeah, brought the ball to the eight-yard line. That should be enough for a first down, but I guess we'll have to wait and see. Incidentally, I'd like to congratulate the officials tonight. They have done an excellent job. Ned Skog, the referee, Jim Roundtree, the linesman, Lindsey Henry, the line judge, Herbie Cook, the back judge, and Bobby Freeman, the umpire, have done an outstanding job tonight of uh, officiating this football game. It's first and goal for the Panthers. Straight ahead handoff. That was a fumble. They bobbled fumble, the, the Bumble the snap, snap huh? Fumble the snap. It looked like one of those funny quarterback sneaks that Benton likes to run, but in fact it was, as you pointed out, a, uh, I think Jones got it and got a yard out of it. 
mishandled, but he did pick up one, so it's going to be second down and six. As uh, or second and goal from the six, as the ball is placed down, and Benton will have to score here. If uh, they do not get the score here, that may be the demoralizer for the season. Well, they'll just take this game and uh, look at it, learn what they can from it, and then burn the tape. I think. Yeah. <laughs> Here's Cadino touchdown. touchdown. Robin Cadino. He deserves to be the one to score. And I'll tell you what, he waltzed in. Nice block out his, there by Shellnut. I was going to say a superior block. Is that Shellnut? No, or it's or 43. It little? That's very little. little. Greg Little just cleared the way and made the way and intimidated a would-be tackler. He got up on his own and uh, walked off on his own, so he's okay. By the time he got to the sideline, he was very mobile, so we're having a change of personnel there as the referee spots the ball. Catholic changes people or gets somebody on. Now, let's they needed see. somebody for Sturm. They hadn't replaced him. They had not. So we got a two-point uh, try here. Panthers trying for two. Jones throws the football, but he's hit just as he throws. That could have very well been an interference out there. They had Drew Yoakum out in the flat, and it looked like uh, Mark Walls, Walls knocked him down. Walls him before the ball even got there. It, before anybody knew what was happening, Yoakum was belted by Walls to the ground. Yoakum got up, palms up, saying, what's going on? But there is no call. I guess the officials are saying no blood, no foul. The run up and the kickoff by the Benton Panthers. The ball is fumbled. Now it's picked up, and the ball carrier evades one or two tackles before he's buried under an avalanche of purple jerseys out there and knocked to the ground. Huh? What color is that? Maroon. Did I say purple again? I have trouble between purple and maroon. I, I like purple, as a matter of fact, if I have to be honest with you. I just have to tease you, Bill. Go ahead, tease me. I'm used to it. <laughs> when you're as short as I am, pal, you've been teased all your life. <laughs> First down, 10 to go for the Rockets. Three minutes, 50 seconds left to play in the football game. Catholic has the football and the lead as they lead the Benton Panther by a score of 32 to 14 here at C.W. Lewis Stadium in Benton. The quarterback back in the ball game for the Catholic Rockets is Justin Brady. And... Uh, he tried to work his way outside, but uh, nobody was very fooled on that one. Read very well by the defense. Coming up to be the primary tackler for Benton was number 57, Aaron Windsor. And Mr. Holder was in on another play. He's going to be a good one for the Panthers, too. Good athlete. Before his career is over here at uh, Benton. It's second down, seven to go. Pick up a three on the play by the quarterback, Brady. Got little the movement in the line, and now we're going to get a whistle. We got the full starting defense for Benton in there, pretty much, except for uh, Holter in it, linebacker for Lincoln. Uh -huh. and, uh, I guess they're, they they want to work on it. They I wonder if Lincoln better. is Lincoln hurt, you suppose, or just taking uh, a breather? I think they're probably just giving Holter a shot to, at, at playing some here. The they're movement decent. in the line is called against the Benton Panthers. They mark off five yards for encroachment. So it's now second down and uh, two yards to go for the Catholic Rockets. They call it offsides, but actually I believe it was just encroachment. Looking out at the referee saying, what did I do wrong? Was number 31 uh, for the Panthers. And that is Brian Holter that we were just talking about. Now they're set to go again. Handoff, no handoff. Brady still has the football and somebody better get him. But there's a flag down, now another flag as uh, Brady brings the ball out across the 50. I think we may have a clip there. And we've got a couple of angry men down there in the ball game. Obviously looking for more playing time was Kurt Keyes, who's a six foot, 202 pound senior. And as he made his way back toward the Catholic huddle, he was waving his fist at one of the uh, Benton Panthers. But uh, regardless of that, Catholic is going to be penalized and the ball will be taken back 15 yards for a clip which will make it third down and about 11. We call it third down and ele second down and 11, rather. They don't lose the down on the play. So with 2.41 to go, the Rockets still have the football, but instead of having a first and 10 at the Benton 47, they now have a second down and 11 from the Benton 24-yard line. 
And the Panthers need to button on their helmets and go for it right now. One more score would make it at least reasonable. Hand off straight ahead, going nowhere. Pick up on the play of maybe two at the most. The ball carrier that time for the Catholic Rockets, number 48. That's Philip Kickpour. And he was wrestled down after he picked up, well, I guess he got four on the play, didn't he? So it's now third down and about eight. We're giving three, third down and eight yards to go with the clock still running at two minutes exactly left to play in this football game. Making his way from the field for Catholic is Chris Cassio as the Rockets come to the line of scrimmage. The quarterback is Justin Brady. He fakes one, fakes two, and hands off to the second man through who plows out across the 30-yard line, knocked down at about the 36. Pick up on the play by Brian Loeb of about one, two, three, three yards. Let's call it fourth down, five yards to go. Fourth and five for Catholic, and they'll kick it away. And with a minute and 25 left to play in this fourth and final quarter, the Panthers will have one more opportunity to score, but they're going to have to work against the clock and a very, very determined Catholic defense. The ball is taken in by Jake Goheen at about the 37-yard line. He brings it out to the 41, where he is powered to the ground. Primary tackler that time for Catholic was Chris Kittle, who plays very good football on both sides of the line of scrimmage. He's all over the place, defense, offense, and uh, special teams there. So it's a minute and nine to go. The Panthers have a minute and nine seconds left to make something happen uh, good for this football game. They can score another. That would put them in uh, the 20 range, which would be at least uh, face-saving for them. Let's see what they plan on doing. College back in a quarterback. We get a whistle and a... What? What did we have? The clock was not run down. I know that. So apparently we had somebody to line up off offsides or something. Let's see. It's Catholic. It's against Catholic. Well, and that we'll... very thing. I think they lined up offsides. Dead ball foul, offsides, encroachment against the defense. It's first down, five yards to go as the ball is placed out at the 46-yard line now, which makes it a little easier for the Panthers. The clock now running again. Collett, the quarterback, still in that tight uh, wishbone offense. Quick throw intended for Goheen. That one just sailed Nowhere across. Right. It was wet ball, and he just really threw it over the top of Goheen's head. So the ball goes all the way over into the rocket sideline, but the clock is stuck with 42 seconds left to go. So we have 42 seconds left to go, second down and, ten, and five from the 46-yard line of Benton. They have the ball, but they trail 32-14. Now call it back to throw. Now he's stopped and buried under an avalanche of yellow jerseys or white jerseys and yellow helmets at the 40-yard line. He was trying to shake his wide receiver, number 82, Chris Ramsey, loose, long, and uh, Mr. Yoakum short, but it just didn't work out as uh, before either one of them could get free, he was tackled for a big loss, six yards, back to the 40-yard line. So it's now third down, 11 to go for the Panthers, clock down to eight, seven, six. They will get a play away. A little air ball fly toss to Goheen, who catches it and is knocked out of bounds with one second left to play. But on the play, it's first down and 10 for the Panthers as the ball is marked at about the 39-yard line. 39-yard line of Catholic, first and 10. Would you go for the Hail Mary here? Oh, why not? Why not? Throw it as far and as deep as you can and hope like the devil somebody catches it. Or you get a... Uh, penalty interference. for interference down there deep and have one more shot at it. I'm sure Collett will throw. He attempts to. He's got a man, Goheen. The ball is in and out of Goheen's hands. Is playing very good defense again that time was number 12, Mark Walls. The clock runs down. The whistle blows. The game is over. And the Benton Panthers have tasted defeat for the first time in 1988 at the hands of a very good Little Rock Catholic Rocket football team. 32-14 is our final score. We'll be back with a post-game wrap-up after this 90-second commercial timeout.
the windows go down, Bubber. 